Hey guys, DMike here for a new series for Super Nintendo Sundays. I know that there weren't really a ton of votes, but I think there were maybe three, but that's okay. Um, enough of you voted that there was a majority that said they wanted to see something new instead of uh, just rolling along with the other two series. So we're going to do some Illusion of Gaia, 1994 Quintet Enix title. And I would love to do more with the intro, but that's all that you get. So the intro itself is handled more in game with the starting of this journey. We're going to start from the beginning. Diary one. The game gives you a very little ability to remap your buttons, but I guess that's nice if you need that. I typically just stick with the default. But yeah, here you go. Starting a game off the best way with some book learning. Who doesn't love going to school? And apparently it's some sort of uh, religious type of a school. It looks like we're being taught by a monk of sorts. And here's our main character who is speaking to us telepathically. His name's Will. Get used to that. And the game just comes right out from the gate with some exposition, as RPGs are known to do. This one is more of an action RPG, though, so at the very least there is a little bit more to it than just text and battles. But yes, this is Will. He... Went with his father. His father is an explorer, adventurer. They went to the Tower of Babel. The biblical Tower of Babel, I'm assuming, is what they're referring to, but it could be in other types of history and types of context like that that I'm unaware of. But anyway, he made it back to the starting area, South Cape. Unfortunately, his father did not come back with him, and we'll have to go and figure out what happened. So, he wants to be an explorer. He wants to go follow in his father's footsteps, and in this case, actually physically go find his father. So there you go. Well, that's the school bell. That's all for today's lesson. We don't want to be delinquent and fall behind. And the game just comes out once again, swinging with saying that there are demons outside of town and to use the buddy system. So these are our four friends and they color coded their texts. So that way you know who's talking, very convenient. Seth is the one in purple, the nerd. Going to the usual place, you know, where the boys hang out, play hooky, get a little high. All right, here we go. Eric in the orange, he's gonna go home. He doesn't want you to look like you're a mama's boy. And finally, Lance in green, the cave at the seashore. He'll just hang around. But yeah, here you go. You can go on top of the roof, which feels pretty unsafe. But this is one of the intro gimmicks that we'll be using a lot. This is the Gaia of mentioned from Illusion of Gaia. This is her. Oops, let's get through that. But yeah, there. Uh, there's a lot more that we can do with this in the future. For now, not a ton. This dark space will actually become more populated and have a lot of things you can choose in the future. But right now, you got nothing, so. <laughs> you have a jumping habit. We just can't get enough. We just like to jump, jump. And here, my friends, is something very important that you're going to want to pay attention to. This is the red jewel. It is the hidden item of this game. Or items, I should say. Not just one. There's actually 50 total. And some of them are kind of sneaky. So if you're able to get yourself all 50, you unlock a bonus dungeon. And there you go. You are also given a little tutorial on how to run. So I always have the run, so it doesn't matter to me. But yeah, there you go. So there are three red gems in this area. This lady loves pot, but she feels sorry for Seth. Apparently Seth is having a little bit of uh, domestic issues at home. Sadly, poor Seth. As you can see, things are not good. They're wasting good pot that way. And here is Lance living here with his frail mother. Apparently every woman in this town has a headscarf and looks like they are working at a restaurant. So there you go. All women are the same. If you come in here though, which apparently their upstairs doesn't have a bed or anything, it just has barrels and pots. So maybe they're just moving in. And uh, because they're poor, let's rob them and take all of their life savings. That's the red jewel in Seth's house. Not really a ton to do in South Cape, but it is kind of funny to explore the homes of your friends. 
Eric is a little bit on the wealthier side. As you can see, he's got windows, a fireplace. He's also apparently got Lance's mother. Okay. It's the little things in life that make you rich or poor. Yeah, one of those things is normally money, and uh, it's not really little. There you go. So, Eric's father claims that because they had uh, dominion of this home before anybody else, that them being rich doesn't mean anything. Uh, apparently, he has two mothers, so maybe he's uh, into polyamory. Who knows, Eric? And she's not on fire. She just has the toots. Makes her br her brain ache. Maybe she has uh, some sort of brain-sucking parasite. There are children on the roof again, so you're going to be noticing that uh, looks like they're playing a little bit of red light, green light. I think that's maybe what this game is. There you go. I called it before I even saw it. You're welcome, viewers. And this woman is very displeased with us jumping off of buildings. Lady, how about you mind your own business? Okay, we're going to do whatever we want. We got a little bit more exploring to do in South Cape. This guy is also apparently farting into this pot. Oh, he's cooking this pot. That's what he wants us to believe. What is he cooking in his pot? Jesse, we need to cook. Okay, so we can go in here. This is our grandmother. She is the one that we're staying with currently now that our father is out getting milk and cigarettes. So there you go. Dinner's not ready yet, so... We need to be mindful of time, but let's go ahead and talk to our very dapper Grandpa Bill. So, he's calling us out for staying after for school. Come on, Grandpa Bill, you know what we're doing. We're just hanging around, having a good gosh dang time. So that's basically all you can do. You can't leave the city yet and do anything to progress the story. So instead, we're gonna head down there. There's a little bit of story that we can embark upon down here. He just can't get it up. You know, I understand. It's all about patience and having somebody who loves you to help. All right, here we go. So this is the seaside cave where our friends like to hang out. We've got Lance and Seth in here. So there we go. This is their little hideout. Out here playing games, hustling each other. A Little bit of gambling never hurt anybody, right? Just wait a minute. We're going to talk to both of them. Seth is very convinced that he's going to be the wiener. But wait. Desperation on Eric's face? What? So now we learn that we are living in a cultural monarchy. And the Edward Castle is being lived in by the princess who has somehow snuck into Southgate to be with the peasants. What? So Lance thinks that's NBD. Her name's Kara, and she loves to sneak away. But he knows, Eric's a little bit smarter than this, he knows that things are gonna be uh, a little bit intense. But now that that's over, apparently, uh, you know, Eric drops a bomb, Lance, Seth couldn't care less. He's not interested in girls. Who needs girls when you could be adventuring? But once you talk to Eric, you can sit down here at the table and learn about Will's mysterious powers. So there you go. He can move things without touching them. Kind of like the powers. Just touch your forehead and you can have a psychic battle in the parking lot. Very good. And we we're asked to show off our powers for free. Uh, rude. You got to pay for this. But yeah. We can apparently use our telepathic, no, not telepathic, telekinetic powers to move stuff. That's going to be a pretty key element to puzzle solving in this game that isn't used in super creative ways, but it is what it is. But everybody else in our group is very jealous, peanut butter and jealous, in fact, that they're not able to do similar cool things. Unfortunately, these normal peons are just not quite psychologically inclined. Or psychically inclined. I mean, these guys couldn't get it up for a monarch escaping the castle. So, they're a little bit underwhelmed. Oops, skip through that. If you touch the D-pad when there's text coming up, you will skip it. So, I'll try not to do that. 
But yeah, we're asked to pick a card and find the Ace of Diamonds. Do you think we can do it, viewers? Which card do you think it is? Is it Eeny, Meeny, Miny, or Mo? I'm more of a Miny guy, so let's go ahead and pick card number three. And of course it's the Ace of Diamonds. No matter which card you pick, it will always be the same thing. So there you go. So they're convinced this is the beginnings of some sort of a psychic power. Seth, being the nerd of our group, confirms it. Thinks that it's magic, so... And this has actually been disproven. There are not five senses, they are closer to seven or eight. I don't know exactly what they are off the top of my head, but go and do your own research. Not on YouTube. So there you go. So he's believing it's the sixth sense. Well, unfortunately, we're no Bruce Willis, so I couldn't tell you. But there you go. So they just want to keep playing games. Just one more game. There isn't really anything more interesting that happens in this area. But there is something interesting that happens at the outside. So once you leave, you can see that it's dark outside. And the fisherman that's all the way over here will move. And you'll need him to move to this-ish area, which will only happen if you go in and out of this cave a few times. So I'm going to do that, and then I will be right back with you viewers. Okay, everybody. When you go in and out of the seashore cave to hang out, you'll see that the fisherman has moved over here. And if you check out his pot, you can steal that from him. Nice. So there you go. Those are the three jewels that you'll be wanting to grab while you're in South Cape. And if you don't grab all of them, you're screwed. And that's just kind of how the game is. You will not have a chance to come back in a lot of places and get them. But uh, something is going a little crazy. I'm kind of feeling kind of piggy right now. So apparently, oink oink, this pig is wrecking the room. But why is there a pig in Will's house? Great question. Doesn't have much to say for itself. But it is going to aggressively push us out of the way. Rude. But here is the escaped princess herself, Princess Kara. Now we know that his name is Hamlet. Very cute. Pretty true, though. You shouldn't snort at strangers. Viewers don't do that. The text in this game is a little strange, but that's okay. Um, also rude, uh, we just came from school and we were hanging out playing cards. We didn't have time to get all spiffed up. All right, Kara, how about you back off? <laughs> there you go. Well, excuse me, princess. It's very fitting. There you go. Now she's just going to make fun of us for not knowing our parents. Ugh. Read the room, Kara. Jeez. But apparently our father is renowned enough. Olman that she even knows of him, so... <laughs> now she's gonna psychoanalyze us. Well, if you're not sad, you should be sad, because I would be sad. Yeah, I don't know... 100% what the point of this is, but... Exposition in 90s Super Nintendo games was a world of its own. Sorry, me too. When I sing opera, completely lose track of time, I understand. So there you go. He fell in love with her voice. Couldn't care less about the way that she looks. What a progressive guy. And apparently Kara was singing with them just a moment ago. Well, that doesn't sound like singing. No, oh, 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 oh. Probably not a uh, fun thing to sing, but there's a, been a scream from downstairs. Get used to this music. This is basically the everything is horrible. We're fighting everything music. So we need to go and see what's going on downstairs. Oh no, Kara's been caught. Be gone. So there you go. It's the royal guard coming back to bring Kara to the castle. Apparently has no regard for their safety and health at all. Does not understand because she is a child. And so they will just aggressively drag her Slowly backwards because they did not know how to animate sprites better than that back in the day. Okay. She played us for a fool. Kara, will you ever learn? Always trying to escape? And then the music just fades. And it's just kind of like, yeah, you know, business as usual. And whatever. We just watched a, a girl who had escaped the castle. 
be drugged back by her hair. So there you go. And Grandpa Bills is like, oh, it's just a practical joke. You know, she's not in any sort of mortal danger. But uh, Grandma Lola does tell us about an underground cavern in the prison that's in the castle as well. So very interesting. You wouldn't want your, your prisoners to escape, so let's build a maze and trap everybody down there forever until they die. Wow, what a heartwarming, fun kids game. Her safety's in danger, but dinner first. You can't be upset on an empty stomach, guys. Come on. That's not how the world works. And what better to have for dinner than snail pie, a little escargot with whipped cream. Grandpa Bill, as uh, fat as ever, eating half the dang pie. Okay. And you know, not creepy or anything that you uh, have a dream with a girl that you've met for 15 minutes before she gets captured and taken away as hostile as possible. Okay, uh, sure. Do you dream about people you randomly meet, viewers? Man, Grandpa Bill just has a ravenous appetite. My goodness, man. But there you go. We've got a letter from King Edward. Bring the crystal ring from Omen's things to Edward Castle. So, you know, just being told to mysteriously bring an artifact of ours from our father to the king. That never ends poorly, right? And Lola, she's been in a mood ever since she saw that letter. But don't worry. When Grandma's in a bad mood, she's going to teach us some magics. <coughs> That's pretty, pretty lame. Ooh, got him. And uh, this is another kind of mechanic of the game. It's a little bit of um, leaning into the gimmick of music. Will is a skin flute player himself, so he knows... Now, how to play Lola's melody. He's got his grandma's melody on his lips. Great, thanks, grandma. But, uh... Okay, so Grandpa Bill, big appetite, also pervert. Great. But, uh, yeah, we apparently need to get some... some ring to the king of the castle. He needs that to happen. We don't have it, so where are we gonna get it? Well, just be careful. You're probably going to get murdered, but... All right. And that's what we will do next time. We'll go and check out Edward's castle, see about this whole ring business, and progress the story. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Illusion of Gaia. Thanks for checking out this brand new series on Super Nintendo Sundays. And I'll see you next time. Bye.